Hi, welcome back to my channel, Manga Hoarder. My name is Laura. I'm making a video. It is the first time that I've been in front of a camera in seven months, so this seems a little bit odd to me, but here we are again. And hopefully we will be seeing you regularly for the next year or so. Um, yeah, or at least the next six months, because that's what this video is about, my next six month TBR plan. Um, my sister and I have been kind of discussing um, over the last half of a year that we've been offline, or at least I've been offline, um, what we want to do with our reading. Uh, we've been kind of making up some plans, um, me more than her, obviously. Um, but one of the things we came up with is that we're going to do sort of a joint TBR for the next six months. It's sort of building off of an idea that we had and have tried out on two previous 24-hour readathons. If I have videos of those, maybe I'll link them up down below. But basically in those videos we had wrapped up a bunch of books that we hadn't read on a topic or we thought the other person should read and we wrapped them up um, and then just randomly chose them and read those volumes that were wrapped up um, during those 24 hours. And so in the course of a 24 hour period you're reading a lot of things that you didn't want to read or that you were putting off reading or, you know, it was almost fun picking things that were really just the worst because it was short and painless and you know now we're done it's over with and it was just sort of funny to watch the other person struggle etc so we've decided to do something similar for the next six months we are going to choose um, books based on sort of a theme um, and we are going to wrap them up and we are going to choose them randomly um, not necessarily to torture ourselves, but definitely to force ourselves to pick up things that we have had a mental block to pick up. Uh, some of these things neither of us have read. Some of them one of us has read, but the other one wants to reread. And some of them um, either one or both of us have read partially, but haven't finished reading. And so we want to read them. And so this is going to give us a chance to get over that little tiny mental hurdle um, and I know that you know what I'm talking about if you are a reader or book buyer at all. There is this sort of mental hurdle. After you have that book in hand that you've bought, you're like, this is going to be the best book ever. If you don't read it right away, you put it aside, and then when you pick it up later, you're just like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. That is the mental hurdle. So uh, we're just going to try and get over that mental hurdle. And uh, we have picked out 50 titles. Um, that we want to read. The plan is to read the entire series, not just the volume that's been wrapped. So that's a little difference from the 24-hour deal. Um, and then the other difference is that they are specific format. Um, so you know if you are um, buying comics, sort of like that standard, particularly uh, Shonen, uh, Shonen Jump for um, Viz Media, standard size is this sort of like general digest size. And then the popular size that publishers seem to be really getting into um, is this one, which is just slightly larger. Um, so we are choosing books that are in this slightly larger size because we noticed that these are the books that we have read the least of, I think the least in a percentage. Um, it's a size that I genuinely do not like because we do not have enough space for them. And now um, publishers are unevenly publishing in that size. Um, it used to kind of generally be books that were either kind of like higher tier or more important or vintage and now it just seems to be everything and I think certain publishers in particular have realized that they can charge a lot more for books in that size than they can for the smaller digest format size. That also irritates me. Um, but regardless we have a lot of books we have a lot of books in that particular size and most of them, well not most of them, but a huger percentage of those than any other size I think have gone unread. And so we've decided to pick books, we've jointly picked books, we actually stayed up until 2 o'clock in the morning last night picking titles, um, organizing them into categories, um, and we're going to wrap them up to choose every month for our TBR for the next six months. This isn't going to go past six months unless we think that it is successful. Um, so what we have done is we have chosen five categories. We, they're kind of odd categories, but they're a way to balance out our reading so we don't end up getting too much of one thing at once. Um, so our categories are Osamu Tezuka, 
and then we have two vintage categories. One is um, older than 1970 and one is uh, 1980s, 1990s. And then the other two categories are uh, super fluffy, something we just expect is gonna be really light and fluffy to read, and then everything else, which tends to be series, oddly enough. So we've put, we've put these categories, um, the plan is to choose one from every category every month and read it, um, and then for me at least, to come back and talk about it. I don't know if I'm going to have that much follow through, <laughs> but um, just, you know, knowing my past behavior, but um, that is sort of the intention. At the very least, I can show you what it is we're about to wrap up into presents for ourselves to open for the next six months. We both really enjoyed doing this in those, um, those shorter stints, those 24 hour readathons. And so we thought this might be a really fun way to get through some of the books that we really have just had a mental block of picking up. So I'm just going to show you what we have picked out. I'm not going to describe the premise of any of them because there are 50 titles here. So I'm just going to list them off. You can see the covers, but let me know if you've read any of them. Um, I can't pick any up more than another just because they're going to be wrapped up soon, but let me know your thoughts. I think the first category I'm going to do, and this is actually the biggest category, is just sort of like the miscellaneous. So it's mostly kind of modern, um, generally series. Um, yeah. And they're titles that we've mostly, I think most of them we have started reading or one of them, yeah, most of them, both of us have started reading, um, but just have never bothered finishing. So the first up is House of Five Leaves. This is by Natsume Ono. Then we've got Oku by Fumi Yoshinaga. This is my sister's favorite author. I'll give it my all tomorrow by Shinju Aono. I think I've only not read the last volume. Then we've got uh, Detroit Metal City. This is by Kiminori Wakasugi. This is on that 1001 comics list, so I have read the first volume of it. It's weird, but I do want to finish reading it. Um, then we've got Mobile Suit Gundam, um, story and art by Yasuo Otagaki, original concept by Hajime Yatate and Yoshiyuki Tomino. Um, and I think my sister might have actually read this one, or she's read a good portion. She really is into Gundam which I'm not. I could be, but I haven't. Um, AACA 13, Territory Inspection Department by Natsume Ono. That's the second Ono on this list. I have read very little. I think those are the only two my sister hasn't finished reading. Um, then we have Vagabond by Takehiko Inoue. I would almost say this is one of my favorite manga, but I have never finished reading the last like three volumes because I was waiting for Inoue to finish it and then he went on hiatus and so I've just never gone back. Um, beautiful, emotional. I've even read most of the novel that it's based off of. Maybe that'll happen too. Then we've got Children of the Sea by Daisuke Igarashi. I was reading this in 2019, I think, and I think I got to the second last volume. Um, it's, it's gonna make me cry. Um, then we have Saturn Apartments. This is by Hisai Iwaoka. I have read the first one or two volumes of this. I don't think Jenny has um, but it is sort of a sci-fi but really slow drama so I've been kind of putting it off because it's quite slow. Then this one is um, just an omnibus um, at five centimeters per second by Makoto Shinkai, art by Yukiko Seike. Um, I actually don't know what that one's about. I think there's an anime based off of it but I don't watch TV so uh, then we've got Skyhawk by Jiro Taniguchi. This one I really, really want to read this year. Like, why haven't I read this yet? This is sort of a Wild West type story. It actually takes place in the, the Americas, I think. Has um, cowboys, has indigenous characters, I think. So that'll be um, interesting. We'll see. We'll see how that all turns out. But I'm really curious about that one because there aren't that many westerns in manga. We also have Goodnight Poon Poon by Inio Asano. I think I've read the first two or three volumes of this. I'm not into it, but um, probably should finish it. Uh, we have Stargazing Dog, which is just a little tiny, almost pamphlet. Uh, I think it's two stories about a dog and it's supposed to, you're supposed to be crying bucket of tears by the end. So we've been putting it off. Um, I have Master Keaton, which I have read the first four volumes of, I think, of like 12 or 13. Um, it's a pretty slow, episodic, um, 
it's about a, a man who is an insurance broker and he investigates like things to do with uh, historical archaeological uh, whatever and he he's like a, a MacGyver he has he has knowledge of antiquity and he uses those to solve crimes so that's the stack of just sort of the miscellaneous and then we've got the super fluff stack which is just the weirdest stack in my opinion but it's to help kind of break up uh, some of this other stuff because those ones I think are just sort of like general dramas. I think some of the older stuff might be quite heavy, so this is just sort of to lighten things up, make sure you have at least one light thing every month. Um, so first off is Kimomo Friends. Uh, it says, Welcome to Japari Park. Art by Fly, created by Kimomo Friends Project. I don't know... Oh yeah, this is just sort of like a regular manga, but I think it's about like animal girls or... I think they're not just costumed. I think they're animal girls and they work in an amusement park weird. I genuinely don't know what my brain was thinking when I picked that up. Um, I did also want to add Kiniro Mosaic um, by Yuihara. I have read this first volume. It is a four panel comedy manga and I really did actually think the first volume was quite funny. I think four panel comedy is very subjective so it's hard um, It's hard to recommend but it's hard to really find one that you're going to get into. So I have bought the first seven or eight volumes of that and I do want to read it. Um, and then we have Witch Hat Atelier, but uh, this is by Komomo Shirahama. This is my sister's. She only has the first volume, but we've been hearing really good reviews of it, so thought would pick it up. I'm not really into witches and wizards, so that's that's something I just was never on my radar, so uh, it'll be interesting if I get ch if I get chosen to read that. Um, then I have Kaon. This is by Kakafli. I got the whole series at a secondhand sale, but this is a four coma as well. And this one I think is about a girl band. I don't know too much about it. Uh, Love and Lies by Musawo. I have read the first volume of this. Um, it's about um, government faded um, marriage relationships. So that's interesting. Um, then we have Twinkle Stars by Natsuki Takaya, same author as Fruits Basket. I have read this first volume, but I wasn't super into it, so now that it's done, and I have, I did keep buying it, um, I thought this will help me read it because I wasn't, I'm not too keen on reading it. Um, then we have Princess Jellyfish by Akiko Higashimura. I know this one's really popular and favorited. I really liked the first volume, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of in between about what I've read after that. I don't know. It's it's okay. Um, I've read about half of it, so I need another kick, another push to read more of it. I think my sister's only read a little bit of it too. And then we also have Ran in the Grey World. This is by Aki Irie, um, and this one is supposed to be really beautiful. It's quite cute. I like the art in it. My sister's read more of it than I have. We have some questions about the uh, age gap dimension of the relationship that may be inappropriate. So those are the fluffy comics. And then we just have all of the vintage piles. So let's go with the... I think it's the 80s, 90s. Um, you know, we didn't check things really carefully. It was just kind of a... we eyeballed it. Um, so we might be slightly wrong. If we are, feel free to share, but... Um, we weren't trying to be super exact either. Uh, so first off, we've got Samurai Crusader. I think we have two or three of this series in the collection. Story by Hiroi Oji, art by Ryouchi Ikegami. Um, I do so love Ryouichi Ikegami. I think his art is absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to read that. Um, then we've got the Voyeur. This is by He. Ihirio Yamamoto, um, published by Pulp. It's just a one, one-off. I think there's a sequel. I think it is about voyeurs, though. Um, then we've got Chicago. I have actually read this, but I want to read it again. This is by Yumi Tamura, same author as Basara. I really enjoyed it. Uh, we have Orion. This is by Shiro Masamune. I think there's only about two Shiro Masamune in this series or you know that that were published at the same time that I haven't read that being one of them um, Seraphic Feather this is by Hiroyuki Utetane Yomorimoto um, 
this one is pretty short. I think we've got like eight volumes or something of it, but I don't know too much about it. I think it's about angels, obviously. Uh, Benke in New York by Jinpachi Mori and art by Jiro Taniguchi. Jiro Taniguchi is supposed to have been known um, particularly in his early career of writing crime dramas. This is the only one in my collection that I have and I haven't read it yet so I would really like to read it. Um, and then we have Satoshi Kon's Opus which I thought I had read but now I'm flipping through it. I'm not I'm not convinced. I don't remember. Um, then we have a Banana Fish. This is by Akimi Yoshida. I have read a chunk of this in the newer edition. Um, well actually the old edition smaller edition but we have it also in this large size. My sister also had a chunk of it so we decided we'd throw it on here. Um, it is a longer series. Um, then uh, Domu, A Child's Dream. This was actually gifted to me from Samuel Trejo who used to have a channel um, and uh, really kindly sent this along. This is by Katsuhiro Otomo, same author as Akira. I haven't read it yet. I feel really bad about it. Um, I really do want to read it and um, yeah, I keep flipping through it. It's beautiful. Um, my sister has read it though a couple of times now, I think, and she says it's fantastic and wants to read it again. So should we add it to the collection? And then I also have a number of Gunsmith Cats in this format, so I wanted to read these just for nostalgic sake. Um, so those are kind of the fun 70s, or no, yeah, 70s, 80s, 80s, 90s. That's the 80s, 90s pile. And then the crinkly stack. <laughs> This is the vintage, and they should be around the 60s, 70s, but they all kind of have a similar quality. Um, one of them I'm not convinced about the date, but um, it's it's sitting in this particular collection anyway, because it's more about the feel of things when you read them, kind of balancing out the reading. So um, anyway, we have first Tale of the Beast. This is by Tadao Tsuge. I really love Tadao Tsuge. Uh, I'm so pleased to see so much being translated into English. Um, I have Tutera by Te uh, Keiko Takemiya, one of the Year 24 authors. Um, both the first sci-fi that were published in English are in the stack. I think only two were published in English, but um, I haven't read them yet, so that seems unfair. Um, we have Ding Dong Circus. This is by Sasaki Maki. I have been wanting to read this forever. The cover is just, it's a scream. I love it. I need to read it. Then we have the crinkly one. I haven't even taken it out of the plastic. It's that Miyoko Asagaya Feeling by Shinichi Abe. I will take it out of plastic probably when we wrap it. Um, this is, I think, one of the most, oh, one of the first female Garu authors, but it looks, it's not in the best condition. Like it just, it's got really, um, the spine didn't look too good. Anyway, this is The Sky is Blue with a Single Cloud by Kuniko Tsurita. Tsurita. It's, uh, that's the one problem with John and Cordy's, Quarterly's um, beautiful publishing is that they don't survive the mail very well. Then we've got um, Badass Babe, Sex and Fury and Other Stories by Bon Tentaro. We have Andromeda Stories by Keiko Takemiya. Again, it's another sci-fi drama. Um, this one is Bloody Stump Samurai by Hiroshi Hirata, which I thought was quite funny because we actually did have this in Japanese. Um, Gekiga Samurai drama. This is the one I'm not entirely sure about the date, but I think it probably similarly corresponds. But this is the um, Bat Manga, the Jiro Kuwata. Uh, volume 1 through 3, so it's a little bit long, but it just looks completely adorable, and I can't wait to read it. Uh, then we have The Troublemakers, this is by Baron Yoshimoto. And then last in this stack is Slum Wolf by Tadao Tsuke, again. I have actually read most of this, I just never finished it, and I would really like to read it again. Also, I want my sister to read Tadao Tsuke, because I think she will love him. And then last up is the um, Osamu Tezuka stack. And um, yeah, it's we have a lot of Osama Tezuka and a lot of unread to Osama Tezuka and that just seems wrong, so we're making an effort to read it, but we didn't want to put everything on it because that's a lot of Osama Tezuka. And we also don't want to read more than one or two in a month because that's a lot of Osama Tezuka. Just a lot. Um, so first off, we have Adam Cat. This is 
I also am a Tessie. I guess I don't need to say that anymore. This is Adam Cat. I don't know if Adam Astro Boy is in the cat or if it's just sort of a funny remake with a cat that is Astro Boy. Um, then this is Under the Air. This is a bunch of adult short stories. I think just sort of a variety. Uh, science fiction, historical fiction, contemporary drama. I actually really like his adult short stories, or at least the ones I've read. I've read a few. Um, this one actually is not Tezuka, but we threw it in here because it seemed appropriate. This is Pluto by Urasawa, Naoki Urasawa. Um, it's based off of a short story, or one of the stories in Astro Boy. So we thought that would be appropriate. I have read some of it um, already. Um, then we've got Storm Fairy. This one is actually, I think, kids. More kids short stories. It's like fairy tales. Um, it's very, very cute looking. Um, then we have Barbara. Um, I don't actually know what this one is about, but I'm interested. Alabaster, which is particularly intriguing to me because it is supposed to be a discussion of race. Uh, there's two volumes in this edition. It's just not a topic that gets covered in English translated manga very often. Um, and then I've got Mew, which is supposed to be, I think, the inspiration for Monster um, by Naoki Urasawa, so I'm really curious about it. And then the last one is Swallowing the Earth, which I have tried to read a couple of times and never really gotten very far into it. Um, and this is supposed to be Osama Tezuka's first adult work, I think. So, 50 titles. Um, not too many series. Most of these are actually one shots or, you know, omnibus, so they're not too long. Um, but I think a lot of them, particularly the vintage ones, I think will just take us a little bit longer to read. So we didn't want to overwhelm. We want to keep things a little bit balanced. Uh, the plan is to read one each a week um, and to make sure we're picking kind of equally among the categories. So there's five categories. I will be making videos showing you my picks every month. That's the plan anyway. And I hopefully, if I follow through, which knowing me um, might not happen, but I am going to attempt it, I will also talk about the books that I have picked after I read them. So that is the goal for 2021 going forward, at least until the next six months. We're just going to try this out and see if it helps us to actually read some of the books that we just don't, don't prioritize. You know, there's just some mental block that takes, makes you from picking things up or from finishing a series. You know, you get excited by something more new and shiny or something that's more um, on topic with whatever's going on or, you know, just something like your favorite. You read, read your favorites all the time, but you don't read things that might be just a little bit more difficult to read. So um, that's the plan. Um, let me know if you also have this problem with the, the mental block picking things up when you really know you should read it, you know you're gonna love it. Why aren't you picking it up? Let me know about that down below. I'm really curious to see. I suspect a lot of us, particularly if you have, I don't know, maybe it's just too much choice. Is it too much choice? And that makes it really hard to pick things up, um, which is, you know, not a bad problem to have. Uh, so this just helps like to kind of narrow it down. Uh, but I'm curious if you're experiencing the same problem that we are having, because that, yes something you kind of experience. Um, anyway, that's it for today. Those are the books I'm planning on reading in the next six months, or at least half of them, because my sister will read the other half. Um, and hopefully this project will go well. I'm really looking forward to it. I am looking forward to reading, I'd say 90% of these. There's a couple in here that I'm just not, I'm not certain about, but that's the beauty of this project. It will force me to pick up things and not just let them sit on my shelf for the next 10 years. Anyway, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.